Okay, we're back with turn three. This is the October 1918 turn. The Whites uh, won the initiative roll. If you remember that happened at the end of the last video. And uh, now we're about to carry out strategic movement. So the red player actually gets to go first because they are the non-initiative player. And we're sort of stuck in the same situation we were before in the sense that I don't have a lot of other armies I can really move and do anything with. These guys aren't in a town, so they can't strategically move into Tsaritsyn, for example. I could move the guy from Saratov up here and bring him down to Tsaritsyn if I wanted to. Um, I could also take this guy from Saratov and I could reposition him here and bring him up to Penza or, you know, some beer. I can't, actually, I can't violate stacking, so he'd have to go to Penza or Nizhny. Um, or even come up here and reinforce the Atka, which we can't really see, but get a little closer, you can see that the reds have some ability and down here to begin their sweep up this way, but of course there's just one army here hanging out. Uh, and if we can take out that unit and begin to swing down this way, um, it's not necessarily advantageous for the whites, but it does cut off an avenue of attack for the reds. It's one way the reds can kind of outmaneuver the whites and come around here and begin cutting them off. And so that, that itself is almost worth it, and it, if I could even spare the unit to get to Vyadka and convert it to a, um, I guess I should have left a marker there, uh, convert it over to, oops, what am I doing? Oh, did I know it right? There we go. And if I uh, could take that, then they wouldn't be able to strategically move there. They would have to actually like go to Nizhny or here and move their way up, and it would be just a little bit longer for them to be able to do uh, necessary actions. Uh, it's tough. It's tough to think about what I want to move here if I want to move anything at all. And I do have the partisans, so this is going to be kind of a messy thing. I need to kind of consider and figure out how I'm going to deal with this. Uh, so really I'm thinking the Reds don't have anybody they want to strategically move. Uh, the Laffian Rifles are in a good spot right now because I really want to keep them with this group and keep punishing and pushing the Whites back here. Even though this situation down here... Um, is tenuous, I feel like, for the Reds a little bit. Uh, they have a lot of weakened armies, and not necessarily a lot of whites, but enough they can put some pressure and kill guys this turn if they wanted to go first, for example. And, uh, hmm. So yeah, I don't think I'm gonna make any strategic movements with the Reds. There's just not that many armies for me to play with, and the only one I'd really consider moving is in Saratov. And I sort of have plans for him. I think what he's gonna do I think my goal for the Saratov army is that he's going to start putting pressure up here and taking bolts and maybe pursuing more of these guys up here because I think as, as desperate as the situation can be down here, I'm going to reposition the red train down here and hopefully bolster the defenses here. So the red train is going to do a little bouncing between fronts back and forth, back and forth. But you remember last turn, they were able to get all those units rallied, or most of them, right, except the one in some beers. Or maybe he took damage doing that. Um, I don't think so. I think he just didn't get rallied. Uh, so yeah, the Red Train's gonna be Johnny on the spot, trying to help out their units that need it. Uh, the Red Army units that are hurting and need need that uh, <laughs> valuable Trotsky motivation. Okay, so no move to the Reds. Uh, the Whites get to move some, but again, the Siberians, there's nothing I really wanna move up here to the Siberians, because we've already that first check unit down here. Um, I'm not really interested in pulling units out of, what is this, uh, Chilovetsk, no, is Izhvesk. And moving up here to Perm to pursue that. I have plenty of guys there. And the big thing is I gotta take care of Ufa, so I don't think I'm gonna move anybody uh, necessarily anywhere because I could reach them from those locations. Uh, I will be using the movement down here. Remember, I can move two points, and I will be taking the Terra Cossacks. And they will be strategically moving down to the Katarinador. Um, and the Red Train gets to move now, so it's going to come from up here with its, where it was hanging out with the Latvian Rifles and the 1st Army in Kazan, and it's going to train its way down here, and I think what we're going to do is we're going to put it right here. And the reason I'm going to do that is because these units will attack, and hopefully we'll get it up to the point where we can actually rally anybody that sends a reach in here, here. I can bring some guys back here, or here, or here. So there's retreat potentials, and I can hopefully get a lot of these armies rallied at once. So a little bit of a risk. Maybe they'll get overrun. I highly doubt it. Um, actually, it won't happen at all because they only get one activation, and I don't see the whites being able to execute any sort of fancy moves with that many armies in their way. 
<sighs> okay, so we did all that. Now we must decide what chits we're gonna put in for the reds. We're gonna take, I think, the field staff chit. We always get it, of course. And we're gonna take the south and the east again. Uh, the whites get all their standard chits, but we get to decide what we wanna go first. And honestly, uh, I kinda wanna take the east front, the Siberians, I should say. I kinda wanna see if I can deal with these partisans and maybe try to figure out what I'm doing in perm. Um, just because I know this hammer is coming. And I'd rather take action now while I can to avoid this army running away. And also the partisans just doing nasty, nasty things that they can do. I'd rather just try to take care of them now before they become too much of a pain. <laughs> okay, so I think that's what we'll do, even though, oh man, even though it is very tempting to just want to attack some of these armies down here and kill them. Hopefully we just can win the chit battle and go first. That's definitely a big if. And hopefully logistics chit doesn't come up so all those armies get rallied. So, you know, it's just one of those things you just kind of got to play with it a little bit. And this, this may not be the right call, but I think I am going to activate this front. So, yeah, we'll start with the Siberians. All right, let's see what we're going to do. So the big thing is I got these partisans, of course. Um, very annoying. In a city, they get a shift for that. They get a shift for the river if I don't attack from it. And not necessarily a great unit, it's just a one manpower unit. It is, uh, just gets no benefits on a, on a defense or attack. And if I flip it, it gets even worse values. But again, I don't have a lot to divert here. I don't really want to take things out of Ishvesk because I can feel the reds are going to come up here and try to push me on it. I uh, don't really want to take away a lot from here, although I don't need a lot to kill the 4th Army unit here that's in the open has no defensive values. I could probably just throw a few units at that and hopefully just get a nice result. Although it's just much better to always have superior numbers, right? Getting like a 2 to 1 attack is much advised. It's because like, like we have 1, 2, this guy, 3, 4, he's damaged. Yeah, and this is 5, 6, 7, 8, or 5, 6, 7. And there's just two Cossack units there. <laughs> All right, so here's what I think we're gonna do. <laughs> this could be interesting. There's not enough to really get two to one attack on that and be able to get something decent odds on that guy because he is gonna get shifts, at least one shift because I can't negate the city. Uh, bonus by any means possible. Uh, so, <laughs> if we look at the odds, I would probably need to get a 3 to 1 or 4 to 1, probably 3 to 1, right? Just to even ensure that I wouldn't really take a loss. Yeah. Okay. So, I think what we're going to do is. Oh, this is such a mess, and I really do want to kill that guy very badly. Is it worth taking my elite units, get rid of the partisans, or focus on killing the army? Because the most I can get is a one-to-one -one attack right on the army if I want to do it on the cheap. And I would have to get, if I did one-to-one -one attack, I would have to get at least plus 13 in order to make that a possibility. We have to take care of the Parsons. Oh, God, so annoying. I wish they hadn't shown up. I would've had a lot better plans here. So I think what we do is we will take our elite units and go deal with the UFA threat. So I think that's what exactly what we'll do. We'll take, geez, I need to take at least like four, don't I? So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, the first check is gonna come down and go one, two, three. I'm going to take the Orenburg Cossacks, and I think they're going to pull out of here and go one, two, and come over here. Um, what else are we going to do here? I mean, yeah, he's pretty good too, isn't he? Yeah. And we'll take the second Siberian. Uh, again, that's not really that great, but he can go there. Actually, I don't like that idea at all. I gotta keep that guy there and take this guy, bring him down here. If 
only because he doesn't have negative modifiers and I know that attack is coming. Uh, it's unfortunate, I would like to somehow shift it so I can get better things, but I just don't want to take any losses on killing the Partisan, and I want to try to minimize my losses when I attack there. So let's actually get a little, a little closer. All right, so let's conduct these attacks. We got what, one, two, so we have one to one here with plus five modifiers and three units attacking. So we roll the two die. Hmm, not exactly what you want to see. It's not terrible, six to four, not great. So he gets six times one, and so it's a five modifier right there. And we know that our modifiers initially were five, so that cancels that out. So you do four times three is plus 12. Ah, did that just barely miss again? Yep. <laughs> if I would have gotten plus 13, I would have been able to um, not, take a, not take a hit there, which would have been amazing. But instead I rolled just enough to get a plus 12 differential, so somebody will take a hit. It is a little a, capital D, R. This guy dies. Somebody has to bite it. Is it going to be the Siberians? Because they can maybe come back in a turn or two. These guys get so weak if I reduce them. I think we'll just reduce Capel. Yeah. So forces are getting weaker. That would have been nice to have not taken a loss there, but I did kill an army. So hey, I, I mean, that's totally worth it too. Okay. Now we'll deal with those pesky partisans. Uh, so we have three to one combat there, but it becomes two to one because of the city shift. Um, so let's roll die on a two to one combat. Roll a two and a two. So the attackers, it's a two to one combat, right? So this is not a super great roll either. Two times two is four, and they get, what is that, three, four, five, save a plus nine. Uh, the defender just gets a two, uh, so it's a plus seven differential. On a two to one attack, you have ADR, so that's unfortunate. But uh, this guy does, does have to take a hit and retreat. This guy takes a hit. And I think what we'll do is have him retreat. He can't go that way because of all the uh, zones of control. I think what he'll do is he'll just go be one, two, and just stay on the line there. And we'll go ahead and send the Cossacks into Ufa. Yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll send the Cossacks into Ufa. And the checks too. I guess they can all advance. So we'll send the checks and the guys there. So now Ufa becomes back into white hands. And we somewhat driven off the threat, although we were attacked twice or lost two steps. That was unfortunate. The first one, that's just really bad luck to not get that plus 13. Would have been really helpful. But, you know, hey, you got to do that. And, and we have cleared the threat here, so that's pretty good. Uh, okay, so that's the Siberian shit. I don't think there's anything else I wanted to do. No, I did all the moves I wanted. Um, yeah, that sounds good to me. Okay, next shit. Did I take Siberian out? Yeah, I did. Okay, good. And the next one up is the East Front. Boom. Okay. So, back to where we were just at. Uh, and the real question becomes, how are we going to advance or what we want to do here? I think the strategy we were talking about before has to just keep, we have to keep rolling cities up. That's what we need to focus on doing. Even though they've sort of hurt us here, I don't think they're going to want to extend their lines over here uh, as soon as we keep pushing and doing more damage there, especially as we take uh, other cities that are key. And this is a good, good one to attack. Let's see, there's just four units there. I could easily bring up these armies and just bring a full scale attack on it right there, which is actually not half bad idea. My threat of being cut off is pretty low. Yeah, I think that's what we're gonna do. And the way that's gonna work is this guy's gonna go one, two. This guy's gonna go one, two. Ooh, I'm not gonna be able to get the kind of surround I want on that guy, though, am I? One, two, so that'd be three, four. And I can't, I can basically have to go one, two, three, but stop. 
Uh, no, 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 what am I thinking? One, two, three. Yeah, he can make it. That's right, because it still stays in supply. Well, he won't actually what happen is. Um, one, two, three. This guy will go one, two, and this guy will go one, two, three, because he negates the leg zone control blockage there. So yeah, lots of renewed armies coming down here. There is the question of do I want to try to take on a garrison unit? Uh, them being a weakened army, I don't really want to do that. I could try to like take on one of these smart, probably the smart one to go for. Because uh, I could even oh the partisans can't attack with anybody, so that's actually not how that works, but. And I guess technically Samara is out of supply, so we'll see what happens when the supply chip comes up, because technically the partisans are cutting off their supply, and these armies are cutting off their supply there, so and there's no, this river doesn't touch back to the supply source, so technically these are out of supply. We'll have to see what happens when that actually comes up. I'm pretty sure nothing really happens in this game without supply garrisons, but we'll see. I might be wrong. Maybe I should have left more units in here. That one might have been a smart move, but that's okay. Because we got three to one here. It becomes two to one because he's in the city. And it's a two to one combat. The modifiers are not going to be good for us. Three, six, nine, ten, eleven. So we automatically have plus eleven. Defense, we have one, just one. So it becomes a ten. This could be bad for us unless we get a nice fat roll and they don't. Oh, wow. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Six and a two, almost the absolute worst roll you, they could have gotten. Um, that very much helps us though. So we have two units there, so that's 12 automatically. So now we're down to minus two, right? Um, but then they rolled a two and they have one, two, three, four, so that's eight, so it becomes a plus six. Uh, see, that could have been really bad if they hadn't gotten, if they'd rolled a one, then they just had a plus two. Um, but a plus six on a two to one attack is, uh, wow, a little d retreat. So we do take a hit and we have to retreat. That is not what we wanted. And they were all Cossacks. Taking, knocking. Yeah, see, that would have been maybe smarter to have a unit there, so they would have had one to one odds because now I have to retreat out. And he's going to go one, two. That's what we'll do. And this guy will come in and take out that. All right, so the whites are losing resource cities like mad. Not really good for their long-term survival here, because now the whites are down to zero. They actually can hold zero resource cities, <laughs> and the reds are up to seven. So, um, yeah, we're gonna need to get our act together and somehow get some uh, traction going. We'll have to see what happens. I mean, it's not terrible here. I mean, it's unfortunate some of the roles that could have gone better for us. Yeah, it happens. Still not, uh, still not hopeless though. Still a lot of uh, units left. Still a lot of things we can do. All right, next chit is our friends, the AIF. Uh, they essentially are going to go one, two. They're going to hang out here, I guess. Uh, and just hold they stop that army. I don't think it's going to come down and attack them, but if it does, it'll be in a city, and that won't be so smart for them. Uh, over here... This guy will just, Murmansk will go one, two, three, and get next to the garrison there. And uh, I'm pretty happy with their placement there. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with their placement, these guys there, because I don't really think they're going to do anything else. Right. Until we get that uh, event that may let them attack, which would be pretty interesting. Okay, so that was the AIF chip, pretty easy. Northern Islamic. Uh, that's 
going to be pretty chill because these guys now that we have the garrison unit can begin to move up. And I think they'll go one, two, three. Or maybe they'll go here. So he has to go one, two. Yeah. Actually, he would have to stop there. He could attack us, though. So we'll go here. And we'll put that now, that garrison unit we had that we took before, and he will now hold Merv. So that gets us a uh, partisan proof from being attacked there. Um, which so luckily, I mean, wasn't that, that was prescient that I was able to be like, nah, let's actually not tempt fate and not move that unit up. Otherwise we'd have had really bad stuff. Although this partisan unit up here was quite the pain. Oh there, that is Vesh unit is done. Logistics. So unfortunately that was not good for us down here. Uh, let's first off, let's take a look and see what happens with out of supply garrison units. Doesn't say anything under the special rules for the garrisons. Uh, nope. So let's go look at supply. So let's see what supply has to say about that. Okay. When the logistics is pulled, the white player checks supply set up his units and then attempts to rally uh, his supply disordered units and may remove any of his garrisons he wishes. So I kind of wonder if that means the garrisons are immune to supply. Part, okay, units unaffected by supply, here we go. Partisan, garrison, and raiding cavalry units are not affected by lack of supply. Uh, Cossacks and their home Krug are always in supply. So yeah, they're not affected. So these cities up here actually stay white even though they're technically cut off from supply. Okay, there's no white units that are out of supply, so we're gonna do the rally step for them. Making sure we do that, yep, the white supply step, the white rally step. So once again, we're gonna roll some dice and see if we can get lucky, because we really need a little bit of luck with some of our units here. So let's start with the AFSR. Of course they need a white non-AF pull one to two, okay. Needs a one or two, we'll start with the Kuban Cossacks. They do not rally. That's all we have there, right? That's hurt. Yep, just the Kubans. All right, so we're gonna go up to the north here and or to the east front. Technically, it's north, I guess, from the perspective of the FSI, but it is the east front here. All right, so we've got the Siberians. Let's check for them. Nope. I think there's another injured unit under there, isn't there? Yeah, the Capel unit. No. And I think that's all the units, although there's might be an injured one there. Yeah, the Orenburg Cossacks. Let's see if I can get them healed. Nope. And I know there's one under here, the other, the Uralsk Cossacks. Nope. So nobody rallies for the whites, unfortunate. If we look at the reds, uh, partisan units do not count. Okay, this army could rally. Looking for one or two. Nope. We'll do the, you can barely see it here, the six army there. It's hanging out at Volga. It does rally. Not good for the AIF. Everybody else is good. And then we come down here to where the red train is. And what do we got going on here? Let's see if the 16th one rallies. Nope. 15th. Nope. Uh, let's see if the 8th Army rallies. It does. That is unfortunate. Wow. That's really bad for the AFSR. These guys auto-rally because the red train is next to them. There's not a unit there, so we're good. Well, it could have been a lot worse, I suppose. And do we want to pick up any garrisons? I do not because I have some available. I don't need to pick up anything else. So yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with what I have. No picking up with garrisons. Okay, so that's logistics. The South Front. So now freshly rallied and able to hopefully put the pain on some units. I need to think about how we're gonna proceed here. Because we have two, three, four, 
four, five, and two there. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Oh yeah, this is gonna start getting kind of ugly for our for our friends here. I think what we'll do is we will bring this unit down here. This unit will go one, two. Um, this unit goes one, two, three. We'll go ahead and put him there. This unit will go one, two, three. We'll put him there. We'll just kind of get this little blockage going down. And uh, I was going to bring the Saratov guy up or decide if he was going to try to take on this because, yeah, I'm kind of feeling like this is getting contained pretty well. I feel like that's going to be difficult for them to break out of. So, yeah, let's go ahead and we're feeling a little... I'm feeling a little uh, open here, so we're going to take the Saratov guy, and he's actually going to move up here and take... Um, oh wait, the Cossacks here would have actually technically been out of supply, wouldn't they have? So yeah, so the Orenburg Cossacks are out of supply, because they can no longer trace theirs, so they're actually technically out of supply. I forgot all about that. And then these Cossacks also melt away, because they're out of supply. Oh, that makes that front incredibly weak. Uh, all because of partisans. Partisans really aren't helping me out here. Um, yeah, those partisans are killing me. That actually really hurt because I didn't really make that clear, but because there's basically lines that go up here and I could have stuck back down here, but that partisan stopped me from getting to both Orenburg and the Uralsk, right? Because I could have used the rail lines all the way and then taken the river here, but that that effectively puts the, puts the hurt on us here. So yeah, this unit's definitely gonna move up now. I feel like the, the, the Siberians are teetering now. They've made, made some uh, crucial errors maybe. So yeah, we'll take this fourth army up and it will go attack here at Volsk. It's gonna go one and attack. So let's go ahead and finish this attack first. Okay, it's four to one in a city, becomes three to one. We roll. All right. Red rolls four, white rolls two, so four times one, and he gets plus three because of his modifier on the attack, so he has seven total. This unit has a negative three, becomes negative one, so that's plus eight differential on a three to one attack. And that is a defender retreat, so it is out. It melts away. And this guy moves in here. Now this is when you would use a done marker, even though technically we've already moved the east because this guy moved from one front to another and you can't double activate. And that's when you would use a done marker. Um, although since we've already activated the east, that's really not essential. So I'll just take that marker off. But I would just say that if this had happened earlier and I hadn't moved the east front, I would use the done marker then. All right, so down here, I think what we're gonna do is attack the Don Cossacks. They are the thing that's really kind of keeping these guys from being totally cut off and surrounded. Again, I've just been kind of foolish, although I guess they will get to fight their way out, technically. Um, and lucky for them, this the supply chain hasn't come out yet, because otherwise they could be in a world of hurt. So these two guys are actually going to attack there. This is an 8-2, to two, which becomes 4-1 to one combat. Uh, rolling the die here. Oh, this is interesting. All right, so we got a six to three result. So the Cossacks have uh, six times one is six, plus their inherent defensive modifier of one is seven. Unfortunately, this is not really going to help them out that much, I guess. Three times two is six, and then they also get plus six again, so that's plus 12, uh, and minus seven is a, what, plus five differential on a four to one attack. Just missing out, and that's a DR. It's a big D. Uh, retreat so everybody would have taken a loss. So he takes that and uh, he will come join the Terex down here in the Katarina door. And this guy will advance. Oh yeah, not looking not looking so hot there. See, and the thing was if I could have just gotten even on a four to one, if I could have just gotten a, a Plus one to three, he could have he would have taken a hit, which would have been at least worth it. Uh, that would have made that worth it. So, but yeah, so it goes. Uh, that is the southern front. AFSR, Armed Force South Russia. Now do not have many options. I think what they're gonna have to do though is they're just gonna have to come out here and attack this guy. So he's gonna come out and go here. 
they will do a two-way attack here. So we've got, what, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we got two to one attack. Let's roll our die. All right, so a six and a four. So this kind of gets six, seven, eight inherent defensive value. We have four, one, two, Six, so that's 24 automatically, right? 24 minus eight is 16, so that's our starting value here. So we have 15, back up to 17, 19, 20, 21, 20, and 22. So a plus 22 differential on a two to one attack is a DR, right? So he goes here and he has to go one, Two. So yeah, he'll go that way. And we can advance after combat if we want, and I think we will. Yeah, that should that should do it. Because essentially they can't come here. I guess one unit could come here, but they couldn't go any further because they wouldn't be able to get supply anywhere. So this is gonna hopefully reduce. It won't actually really reduce, but it'll keep them from getting pocketed. Um, oof, that is rough down there. Okay, so that was the AFSR chit. And that leaves just one more. That is the field staff chit. Um, honestly, I don't have anything I want to field staff move. Yeah, I think we'll just sort of hold out there. There's nothing I want to move with the field staff chit. Okay, so that's the end of that turn. So now we're going to move into the next turn, which is uh, going to be entering turn four. And if we look at the track, you can see that it's actually a winter turn. And that really just means that the lakes become frozen. Um, you can still use them for supply, but I forget, like, you can't, uh, essentially you can't use your river flotillas. Uh, if you have any river flotillas, they get taken off the board and put on the next uh, spring track and then you get them back on that turn. Um, otherwise, I don't think there's any other effects. Oh, you can cross lakes, I guess. There's like a couple of lake hexes, right? There's like just this one, <laughs> and you can cross that lake hex, right? There's a lake up there, right? And you can cross that now. Uh, interesting, uh, not necessarily always useful, but interesting. Okay, so well, I guess I'll keep it on the track since we're gonna do our little initiative rolls, right? I'm gonna make sure we finished our turnout correctly. We did all that, we got all that going. No one's won yet, we don't have valid withdrawal or anything. So yeah, we're gonna move next turn and let's roll to see who gets initiative. The reds are going to seize initiative. They roll a six, the whites roll a four. Uh, let's see what kind of uh, random events we're gonna get this turn. So this is the whites of the non-initiative player. We're gonna roll for them. They roll a six. Oh my goodness, AIF offensive. Any or all AF, AIF units may attack this turn when the AIF chit is placed. Ooh boy, so yeah, we're gonna actually, we could use that. We can use that event now, which is actually pretty interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Okay then, I think I like this. I think we're gonna be able to make good use of this chit this turn. Okay, so with the white event, now we roll for the red event. They roll an eight, and it's red terror. So we're gonna place a red terror marker if available in any non-red city I control, except for Krugs, white supply hexes, or cities in the Baltic Republics or Poland. Hmm. So what's another good target? See, if I'd held Ufo, that would've been really good. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it Izbesk. That's what we're gonna do. There's a couple of good targets to make red cities. Honestly, Zaritsyn is a great one, but I'm not really afraid of Zaritsyn being attacked right now. Um, I'm just worried about like having the white sort of counterattack here and get their cities, right? So we own this city and we might as well make it a red city. If it's going to be a resource city, let's go ahead and make it worthless for the whites to hold. Essentially by putting that there, that makes it so that the whites can't receive a defensive shift when hanging out in the city. It's very, very interesting for them. Wow, so that's, some, that's a cool event. That's actually two red terrors in a row. That kind of hurts the whites ability to hold ground. Let's see, anything else I need to do? 
Nope, so that's the end of that. When I come back, we will well, actually have to take a look at the entire uh, let's do the old bird's eye view. So you can see here in the south, not going well again. Some major losses of forces. The reds continue to push and pound down that way. Uh, here in the eastern front, you know, it's a little more mixed, but of course we lost that resource city there and it became a red city and the partisans are still active and we lost our Cossacks. So not so great over there either and because of the pesky partisans. And uh, next turn we see the AF maybe come in action over here, but also more importantly coming to action over here in which these units are probably gonna take on this uh, Turkestan unit. So interesting, interesting, interesting as we move on to November 1918.